um, of not being not giving up. And uh, we could have easily gave in uh, by winning Wednesday's game and just kind of giving in to this game. But our guys kept fighting and kept competing. And that's what you love to see. You know, you're not going to have it. I told our guys at the end of the first quarter, I know we didn't have a lot of pop. We looked tired. You know, PG was tired um, before the game. b said, you know, keep an eye on PG because he was flat today. But, you know, to come out and, and battle the way we did, you know, when our backs against the wall down 20, um, it's like, it's like, like I said, it's just a tribute to our players and who they are as, as men. What was, what was the difference? I think defensively. I think we were able to get some stops and get out and run in transition. Um, I thought Big Zoo was a fourth down low tonight. I thought owning the paint. Um, and, you know, so, like, he was big for us. When Zoo's playing that big at the rim, it's hard It's hard for guys to penetrate, get to the basket and finish in the paint. And I thought Zoo was phenomenal. But our defense picked up, was able to get out in transition, get some easy baskets. Even though we didn't capitalize on probably eight to ten of them, um, we still was able to get stops to get out in transition and attack. And that kind of opened the game up for us. And then PG in that third quarter got to the free throw line a little bit. Um, Reggie made shots in the second half. You know, T-Man was big. So, like I said, it was a total team effort. You know, but our guys continued to keep digging in and uh, we didn't quit and we just kept fighting you've had a win like this before uh just you know having a the portland game where i mean obviously you were up the whole game the portland game but for this to be a 40 point turnaround and you not make the shots that you were happy about the other night like what does that say about the, the uh, build up of this, the makeup of this team yeah i mean if you look at the stat sheet the pg goes four for 20 you know we shoot 41% from the field and 21% from three and still win on the road. Um, it just means a lot about our guys, like I said, about our character. And um, we always believe we can win. And that started from last year, just, you know, believing we're going to find a way to win. And like I said, those guys did it tonight. What did you tell the team at halftime? Um, we're right where we want to be. I mean, down 10, played terrible. Um, we didn't get stops. We didn't make shots. Um, I thought Pat Beverly. Um, I thought Pat Beverly and Vanderbilt's pressure really sped us up and took us out of what we wanted to do. So at halftime, I just said, just relax. If they press you, just attack. Just forget the play. Just go by them and then make a play. And um, I think that helped us out with our psyche. Because um, it's hard to try to run a play when guys are drifting all over you and you're trying to run the set. Like, at that point, all bets are off. But just attack and make a play. And I thought Reggie and PG really did that, you know, when we settled into the second half. But, you know, not having a lot of energy coming out to start. And um, being down to 20, I think we cut it to 10 or 8 at halftime, I'm not sure. 10, yeah, 10 at halftime. We're talking about it at the 450 timeout. Just get it to 10 or under, and we'll be okay. And they did their job of getting it to 10. And then in that third quarter, we was able to go on a run and, and gain the lead. How do you do all that? And, you know, you're missing shots. For six quarters, they were forcing a lot of turnovers. And, like, how do you, how do, how do you finally, like, help your team protect the ball? Uh, with the way they were pressing? I think, like I said, just settling in um, for the most part. But then with PG and Reggie and our ball handlers, are they going to give them pressure like that over half court? Just this attack. Like, play, you know, we're good enough players, we think. So that was kind of our, you know, our model going to the second half. But just don't let them take us out what we're trying to do because they're overplaying, they're denying their pressure. Just attack. And um, they did it for us. He had a turnover record, lost about 12 minutes, and he had six before that. Is that he had talked about when he's at the worst, he's not, he's not speaking himself up, not slowing the game down. Yeah. I mean, how replicable is that when he has high usage throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, I mean, just the talk we had at halftime. Like, don't let them speed you up. They're not going to grow. Whoever you get on, you pretty much get a shot off at any time. So, um, you know, you're not going to have a great shooting night, but you know, for him to take, like I said, I think he took another charge tonight. I thought defensively he was really good. Um, you know, making the right pass and the right play. Had 11 rebounds, you know, so six assists. So there's other things you can do in the game besides score the basketball. And I thought, you know, with PG, um, like I said, not being at his best as far as just, you know, a little tired. I thought the guys, the other guys picked up the slack for him. How's, how's Brian feeling about the, uh, the rebounding after the drills that y'all had? <laughs> yeah, he felt pretty good tonight. He talked about it. Um, I think they had one offensive rebound in the second half, if I'm, if I'm correct. And so we did a good job of hitting bodies and boxing out. Um, I thought we really did a good job on Towns of just you know, trying to frustrate him and trying to limit his shots because he's a great player. And we wanted to try to take him out as best as possible. So we really did a good job with that. And we did a better job on, on Edwards tonight as well. How important was he on uh, Towns tonight? Frustrating, man. Zoom? Yeah. I think it was great, but I think Zoom was better when he was the, the weak side defender. I think we had Nico or Terrence Mangard and Big Cat, and they try to go to the post, and Zoo and Isaiah Chaffee from the baseline side. 
on those big boards and, you know, trying to keep Zoo off of them so he can protect the paint when they had um, when they had Vanderbilt in the game, you know, just being able to guard him and now you're protecting the paint. Any back cuts, you know, anything at the rim, Zoo can protect. So, um, like I said, the coaching staff, um, Dan Craig and those guys, Brandon O'Connor did a good job of just coming up with a game plan these two games to try to limit it, um, big cast touches and the shots. So with that point, he won six in the third, but he seemed to be the guy who pushed him out of that pace. Yeah. More than that, like, as much of this game was like two different halves to the whole team, he seemed to have really two different halves. Yeah. I mean, just well, I just keep telling him to attack. You know, you're going to be able to finish. You know, we have um, ultimate trust in what you do as a player. Um, and just keep attacking. If you get a guy backfilling in transition, go for it every single time. And he has that. Ability to do that, ability to do that, as well as T Man. You know, I think earlier on the season, T Man was more passive, getting, but now attacking straight line drive, the guys are backing up. You got to attack every single time. And that's what Blair did. I mean, he didn't, you know, one for six, like you said, but him attacking the basket really put a lot of pressure on our defense. You had uh, Zoo and Isaiah out there for almost the whole game. And I mean, they put up check numbers because between them, it's like, I know that, you know, Minnesota's got cat. But is there a way that you can duplicate that against similar teams as far as teams that put a true center out on the floor and taking advantage of that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it all depends on the floor of the game, you know, how the game's going. If we need to get our switching lineups out, out there defensively so we can fire and do different things, or if we need to go small so we can kind of make shots and, and kind of spread the floor. So it all depends on how the floor of the game goes. Um, but, you know, you never know. But like I said, Zoo. Uh, these last two games has really been good. Um, you know, like we had to play in a big man's position where he ain't got to try to get back out to three point shooters like Garden Big Cat. So when they started um, um, Okoji the first game, we put him on him and we allowed him to be in the paint. And then when Vanderbilt came in tonight, we were able to put Zoo on him so we could protect the paint as well. Um, so he wouldn't be in unfamiliar territory being out on the perimeter a lot. Let's go back to Eric I think Malcolm Johnson is a great brand this year, but like, is he doing enough the non box for stuff the pace that, that yeah, the pace, yeah, the pace, sorry, yeah, the pace that he generates is big for us. Like you said, we were last in the league last year, pretty much in pace, and now we're the top of the league in pace. And Blair brings a lot of that pace to our team, which allows guys to get open shots, but also I think defensively, being able to start him on the best you know, offensive player on the perimeter really saves PG's legs for him, and um, he's able to guard the best player on a night to night basis. All right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.